ಅನುದಿನ ಅನುಕ್ಷಣ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲೂ ಕಲಿಯೋಣ ಕಲಿಕೆಯ ಹೊಸ ಹಾದಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಜೊತೆಗೂಡಿ ಹೆಜ್ಜೆಯ ಹಾಕೋಣ ಸಂತಸದಿ ಕಲಿಯೋಣ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯಾಯಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ Hi hello namaste how are you all hope all are fine and happy at home that's good let me tell you unlock does not mean the end of the pandemic yes try to understand everyone unlock does not mean the end of the pandemic so better be careful and take care of yourself and always remember everyone always remember regular washing of your hands wearing mask and social distance that's good yes let us let me welcome you all to this english class standard 8th third language english today we will discuss about a wonderful poem rain in summer what is that the poem name rain in summer that's good then why to waste the time without wasting our time let's begin our session come on take out your textbook pen pencil writing materials let's begin our today's session yes as i told that today we are going to discuss about a poem that is rain in summer written by h w long fellow who is the author of the poem yes the author of the poem that is the poem is written by h w long fellow remember the name yes we have to remember the name of the poem and name of the poet very very important my dear students yes observe the screen name of the poem is rain in summer written by h w long fellow class 8 standard fine before going to the poem and its content and the explanation i just want to read out a wonderful quote quotation for you people yes i want you to observe the screen here the quotation is without rain nothing grows am i right yes without rain nothing grows learn to embrace the storms of your life yes we have to learn to embrace the storms of our life that is what the quotation says at the same time i want you to observe and follow it very very carefully everyone please notice the thing over here notice the sentences observe the sentences yes what is that heavy rain remind us heavy rain remind us of challenges in life yes just just observe and imagine if there is a heavy rain remember there is a challenge in your life yes heavy rain remind us of challenges in life never ask for a lighter rain never ever ask for a lighter rain just pray for a better umbrella that is the attitude yes my dear students try to understand and follow this one never ever ask for a lighter rain let the shower comes let the rain comes and pray for a better umbrella that is the attitude so on that note let us begin our today's poem that is rain in summer how interesting now my dear students the name of the poem is rain in summer eh? what is this rain in summer yes now the question arises so in our pre reading activity before going to this pre reading activity let me ask you a question my dear students the question is have you ever heard or have you ever experienced the rain in summer oh it's something different sir rain in summer okay the question let me ask you a question can can you tell me how many seasons are there yes how many seasons have you heard about the seasons yes sir we know then how many seasons are there 
Yes sir, we know about summer season, we know about rainy season, we know about winter season and also we know about autumn season. Yes. So in Kannada also we say, so chali gala, male gala, matu besige gala. Vasanta kala no bharata, autumn season anta. Very good. Huh? Yes. So we have heard, even we have experienced about the different seasons. Yes, in rainy season, we get rain. Summer season, there is a summer hue, you know, like a sh soon we are going to face summer season, then winter season and autumn season. Fine. But here, the poem written by H. W. Longfellow, it speaks about rain in summer. Now, I want you to take out your textbook, see the poem and see the pre-reading activity and observe this picture, my dear students. Yes, usually children like to enjoy when it rains. Yes, isn't it? Do you all like to play in rain when, when there is a rain? Obviously, children like to uh, observe the rain. They want to enjoy themselves. They want to play themselves when it's raining. Obviously, if you just observe the small picture over here is that the, the three kids are enjoying themselves when it's raining. Yes. Of course, not only children, even I feel, even elderly people also uh, like to enjoy themselves when it's raining. Na? Right, that's good. Because rain gives us that sort of freshness. Rain gives us that sort of enjoyment. That is why usually children like to enjoy when it rains. And of course, some like to get wet. If you just observe those two kids, they are happily relaxingly playing when there is rain when it's raining so they like to get wet that is also one of the you know like uh, cutest form that we can observe like you no know, like the thing that we observe even we enjoy when it's raining and let me tell you yes observe this particular picture everyone see when uh, during the rainy season even including me also everybody have this particular experience what is that yes some like to make Paper boats. Yes, observe the picture. Do you have an experience of, uh, you know, making that paper boat and, uh, you know, leaving that uh, boat to float in the flowing water? Right? Yes, that's a wonderful experience and wonderful joy. Yeah, even including me also, I too have the experience of making that paper boat uh, when there is a rainy season and we used to play very happily. And when that boat float on the flowing water, we used to observe so, until where that boat will move and no, we used to enjoy like anything. So, this is what the wonderful experience that we, we, we come across during the rainy season. Yes, as I said that, some children like to get wet, some one want to, uh, you know, like go out uh, during the rainy season and some like to make paper boat and watch them float on a flowing water. Yes, of course, everybody has this particular experience of making that paper boat during rainy season. Just recall everyone. Fine. And very one more interesting thing. Of course, some children like to go out during rainy season. Someone like to get wet. Someone, you know, like to make a paper boat and enjoy the season. But there are some other people who wants to stay inside and watch the rain through the window. Yes, this is also one of the interesting things. Many of the people want to stay at home and they used to observe uh, the rain uh, through the window pane or th through the window. That is also one of their kind of an enjoyment. Right? So, this is what the wonderful experience that we come across during the rainy season. Now, the question for you people, how would you like to play in the rain? Of course, you will give a number of colorful answers. I know that. Because when I ask a question, how would you like to play in the rain? Means obviously you will, you will enjoy like anything, you will play like anything when there is rain. I even have also seen uh, the kids during the rainy season, how they play, how they go outside, how enthusiastic they go to out, uh, outside during the rainy season. Fine, I, I can understand. That is wonderful experience and a joy for us to enjoy ourselves during the rainy season. Fine, this is what the pre-reading activity and... Now, before going to the content part of the lesson, let us see about the poet. As I told you before that, this poem that is Rain in Summer is written by H. W. Longfellow. Here H. W. refers to Henry Wordsworth Longfellow. Remember and observe the picture. 
Remember every time. I told you before only. You have to remember name of the poem and name of the poet. Name of the poem is Rain in Summer and written by H.W. Longfellow. H.W. refers to Henry Wordsworth Longfellow. Yes. Here Henry Wordsworth Longfellow 1807 to 1882. Remember the year also. 1807 to 1882. He was an eminent American poet. An eminent, uh, most interesting and most famous we can say an American poet. When he was 13 years old, just imagine when H.W. Longfellow was only 13 years old, he began to publish his own poems. Just imagine the knowledge of literature. How interesting. At the age of 13 only, he has started writing number of poems and also he has published his own poems. That is what we need to understand the strong vocabulary and the literature that he, he was having. And he became the professor of modern languages. How interesting. He became the professor of what? Of modern languages. Fine. And in the year 1854, H.W. Longfellow gave up his job of professor. Just imagine how interesting and how unique it is. Of course, he has been working as a professor in so and so department. But in the year 1854, H.W. Longfellow gave up his job of professor. And what did he do is there? He has devoted himself. What is that? He has devoted all his time, all his time to writing a poetry. How interesting and how unique. See, this is what the thing we need to understand the word devotion, dedication, determination. Three words I said. One is devotion, dedication, and determination. Only when you, ha when you have a devotion, when you have a determination and when you have a dedication towards your work, surely you will get success in your life. So at this point of time, I just want to tell you my dear students, a small quotation uh, uttered by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Shall I say? Yes. Remember everyone, failure cannot overtake you. Failure cannot overtake you when you are determination to get success is strong enough. Hope you have understood the meaning over that. Yes, here also H.W. Longfellow's devotion, dedication and determination is so strong that he has to become a author, poetry. He was very much interested in writing poems. So, he has published a big collection of sonnets and ballads. The two important words, sonnets and ballads. Sonnets are I think you might be knowing about sonnets. Even in Kannada also it is that. Okay, four line poems. Okay, sonnets and ballads. So let me just read out once again. Observe the textbook and see the lines over here. In 1854, H.W. Longfellow gave up his job of professor and devoted all his time to writing poetry. He has published a big collection of sonnets and ballads. Yes, this is a piece of information about the author, the poet, that is H.W. Longfellow. Now, this particular poem, Rain in Summer, describes how it rains after a hot day in summer. Yes, see the sentence over here. This particular poem, that is Rain in Summer, describes a wonderful description about how it rains after a hot day in summer. Of course, we have experienced the hot days in summer. And all of a sudden, after the summer season, we come across, there is a wonderful, yes, a refreshing rain. So, about that, this particular poem is going to describe and it is all full of rhythm and beauty. Yes, of course, the poem is written by H.W. Longfellow means it should be having a beautiful rhythm and also a beauty in the poem. Yes, shall we see the poem everyone? Are you all ready? Are you all with your textbooks? That's good. Come on. So, before going to the poem, let us see the glossary words. There are some interesting words in the textbook. I want you to observe that. The first word is fury. Fury means intensely hot. If you just see those lines, you can understand where exactly this word has been used. And the second one word is hoof. H-O-O-F. Observe. And even observe the picture over there, my dear students. It means, it's a horny casing of a horse foot. 
horse foot horny casing of a horse foot if you just observe the picture you can able to understand yes the third one is clatter that is rattling noise tap 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 like we you know we we'll, we'll get a sound like that when when it's raining just observe the roof and all there is a clatter sound rattling sound noise we say that's what clatter okay next cr- tramp that is walk heavily then gush flow suddenly if you just observe the picture out there so whenever there is a heavy rainfall the water will gush out flow out suddenly so that is a picture over there gush that is flow out suddenly spout spout means narrow opening a small opening spout narrow opening so these are the very interesting words in the poem used by h w longfellow when we discuss about those lines you should recall these meanings fine and one more word that is pane that is single piece of a glass in a window if you just observe a window there are a single piece of a glass that is window pane we say right so that's what single piece of a glass in a window pour rain heavily we know that pour rain heavily pouring right yes it's raining heavily we say swift quickly quickly we say swiftly quickly swift like that okay yes the next two words are gutter what is this gutter a drain through which rain water or dirty water flows so in one point of uh, uh, poem the poet has used this particular word let us see that one afterwards and roar what is this roar a loud sound produced when water rushes through that's what we get roaring sound when there is a heavy rainfall the water flows it makes that sound roaring sound we say like that you know generally a loud sound produced when water rushes through that is the meaning over there so these are the words we need to observe and once we read the poem we will come across these words and their meaning you have to recall is that clear yes come let, let i let us let us go to the poem now let me tell you once again take out your textbook open page numbers also and this is the first poem uh, from the poetry section that is the poem name rain in summer So let us see the model reading first. I want you to observe the textbook and let us read it carefully and properly, because we have to read the poem. Okay. After that, we will go to the description part. See the first paragraph, everyone. The first line says like this: "How beautiful is the rain! How beautiful is the rain!" And the ending with exclamatory mark. Observe that one. How beautiful is the rain after the dust and heat. in the broad and fiery street in a narrow lane how beautiful is the rain let me read once again how beautiful is the rain after the dust and heat in the broad and a fiery street in the narrow lane how beautiful is the rain first paragraph let's go to second paragraph how it clatters along the roofs how it clatters along the roofs like the tramp of the hooves comparison here wonderful comparison how it gushes and struggles out from the throat of the overflowing spout across the window pane that is the second paragraph and the third one it pours and pours and swift and wide with a muddy tide like a river down the gutters roars the rain the welcome rain written by h w longfellow hope you have got the lines over there yes shall we see the explanation shall we see the description part of the poem yes let us see these slides and all in the first paragraph the first line itself only says that how beautiful the rain how beautiful is the rain ending with exclamatory mark what does it indicate hope you have understood hope you know about uh, uh, the exclamatory mark what does it indicates exclamation exclamatory uh, i think you have studied about exclamatory sentences right that particular exclamatory mark always explains about the sudden feelings of our mind interjection generally you no know, we we have studied in our grammar part interjection right exclamation fine so here how beautiful is the rain ending with exclamatory exclamatory mark the poet begins the poem with the description how beautiful is the rain just observe the exclamatory mark i said the poet is exclaiming the poet is expressing with a joy and happiness yes 
he he felt very happy he felt very joyful what is that how beautiful the rain is when after the scorching heat in the summer season when it rains how pleasant it is how beautiful it is how refreshing it is that is why the poet expressing the poet explaining or exclaiming with a joy and happiness saying that how beautiful the rain is yes the two lines in the broad and the furious street in the narrow lane if you just observe those two pictures in the broad and the furious street in a narrow lane what does it indicate here poet says after the scorching heat in a summer season how beautiful is rain the rain is pleasant and the poet feel just it looks in the narrow lane as it does in the broader streets yes observe the sentence the rain is pleasant and the poet feels just it looks as in the narrow narrow and broad opposite words narrow broad am i right yes it looks as in the narrow lane as it does in the broad streets that is what the observation of a poet see let me tell you while reading a poem we need to understand what exactly the poets wanted to say we need to observe the poetic views over here so that is what the poetic opinion and his expressions so after that next next paragraph how it clatters along the roofs like a tramp of hoofs i i said uh, when i was reading a poem it is a comparison if you just observe the two pictures over here my dear students try to understand it's a beautiful comparison what is this comparison sir yes what has been compared over here yes the comparison is here the poet is comparing the sounds of the rain drops are like a hoofs of the horse so now the very interesting part is that comparing the sounds of the rain drops in one of the nesta program i have observed that uh, how they have created the sounds of a rain drops if i say the rain uh, the sounds of a rain drops li or like we can say using the fingers the the sounds of a rain drops like this like this like this they have shown so how that uh, sound creates when there is a rainfall here the poet is comparing the sounds of a rain drops are like the hoofs of the horse i think you might have observed uh, while riding a horse how it makes the sounds like that like that when there is a rainfall over the uh, top of the roof you can able to make that kind of a sound okay so the sound like this you know like a so I, i hope you can you can able to uh, listen the sound like that but this is what we need to understand so here the poet is comparing the sounds of the rain drops like the hoofs of the horse so here one of the grammar point we need to understand that is simile simile that is comparison comparing between two things here what has been compared the sounds of the rain drops like the hoofs of the horse so that is what we need to understand again from the throat of the throat throat of the overflow, overflowing spout across the window pane here the poet is thrilled to watch the pro, the poet felt very happy very thrilling very enthusiastic to watch what the rain water coming out through the spout here the poet is thrilled to watch the rain water which comes out through the spout so that is what the thrilling and exciting observation done by the poet so that is the meaning of the two lines over there after that it pours and pours and it mixes with the muddy tide and again etc the last four lines they have given there yes the meaning of that one says like this here the poet explains when the rain water flows through the window pane yes as we have observed the rain water flows through the windows and again it will go to the ground level it mixes with the mud yes or no male neeru ಛಾವಣಿಯಿಂದ ಕೆಳಗಡೆ ಬಂದು ಮಣ್ಣಲ್ಲಿ ಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತೆ ಹೌದಲ್ವಾ ಹಿ ಆರ್ ದ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದ ರೈನ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ವಿಂಡೋ ಪೇನ್ ಇಟ್ ಮಿಕ್ಸಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಮಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ಡೌನ್ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ರಿವರ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಡ್ರೈನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ರೋರಿಂಗ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಕಂಪಾರಿಸನ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಯೆಸ್ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ರೈನ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ವಿಂಡೋ ಪೇನ್ ಓಕೆ ಮಿಕ್ಸಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಮಡ್ 
and flows down quickly like a river into the drain with a roaring sound. What a wonderful observation. What a wonderful poetic thought. Yes or no? So this is what we need to understand from these two lines. After that, like a river down the gutter roars and so on so welcome rain. The last line. So again, here the poet is exclaiming. The poet is explaining, expressing with a joy and happiness that how beautiful the rain is. Observe the exclamatory mark over there. That exclamatory mark, it, it gives us a wonderful message that it's an expression. The poet is exclaiming, expressing how beautiful the rain is. So, hope you have understood the explanation part of the poem up to here. After this, yes, let us uh, go to the small activity, my dear students. Uh, here, you are supposed to circle the word that names the picture. What is that? There are some four pictures, a simple activity. Hope you will, you will understand very easily, I know. So, there are two words and one picture. So, which word is belong to the particular picture you need to circle? I didn't circle the word over there. You are supposed to observe that one. Yes, the heading is circle the word that names the picture. The first one is whether it is beak or book. Yes sir, it is book. B O O K. That's good. Second one is whether it is a lane or line. Yes, I, in, in the poem we have come across narrow lane. Narrow lane. L A N E. Yes, it's, it is L A N E. Second one. Third one. Whether it is a boy or a toy. Yes, it's a picture of a boy that's very good b o y good observation and the last one is whether it is a picture of a duck or a dog yes only one letter uh, difference d u c k d o c k sir it is d u c k sir that's good so like this you can you will get number of uh, you no know, pictures uh, from the poem so that you can observe those words and the pictures like that it's a small activity fine hope you have understood this one yes now the very interesting part that is Figures of speech. I told you when I was explaining about the comparison. Uh, you have to remember about this particular chapter called figure of speech in which you have simile, metaphor, personification, alliteration, synecdoche. Just for the piece of information I gave you. So, types of figure of speech. So, in your ten, when you go to 10th standard, you will be knowing more about these different types of figure of speech. But now, as on this class, they have given number of examples about the first one is, that is, Simile. Let us see about simile now. Yes, what is simile? Always remember, while framing a simile, we have to use that word like or as. When we frame, when we write a sentence or when we frame a simile, we have to use the word like or as. Example, Tipu Sultan fought like a tiger. Yes, Tipu Sultan fought like a tiger. Tipu Sultan, no? Huli yente horadidano. Huli yente like. Yente antakanta padaidela adu comparison and use martidiv nabu. Tipu Sultan fought like a tiger. Simile, you were as brave as lion. At the same time, your explanation is as clear as sky. Again, fourth one, God is like an old repairman. See the comparison, how beautiful. And fifth one, how beautiful comparison. Her face is like a full moon. Beautiful comparison. Like that, as cute as kitten, as light as feather, as cold as ice, as cool as cucumber, as tall as giraffe. Like this, we can write number of comparisons like this in order to frame that is similes. Right? Hope you have got the answers and uh, we have understood the topic there. Good. Quickly, let us see the comp comprehension. There are number of questions in your textbook. That is, uh, answer the following question. First one, how does the street look? The street looks so fiery, it means intensely hot. This intensely hot that we have used in a glossary word. When does it rain? It rains after the dust and heat. So, next one is, where is the rain making clattering sound? The rain makes it clattering sound along the roofs. So, once you go through all the paragraph, you, can, you will be able to answer these questions very clearly. So, this is a brief answer that I gave you and observe this one. At last, I, let me give you another three questions as a homework. So, what is that? Write any two examples of simile. Fourth one, where does the rain pour down? And fifth one, how does the water look when it comes down to the gutter? I want you to observe these three questions and follow the textbook and write the answer and show, you, show it to your teacher. Okay? Hope. So, this particular session, uh, you have understood about the poem that is rain in summer. Thank you so much.
so presented by mr rahman ali working as an english teacher ghps budgumpa koppal district thank you everyone thank you so much anudina anukshana maniyellu kaliyona kalikeya hosa hadiyali ಜೊತೆಗೂಡಿ ಹೆಜ್ಜೆಯ ಹಾಕೋಣ ಸಂತಸದಿ ಕಲಿಯೋಣ ನಮ್ಮ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯಾಯಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಯಸ್ ಯಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್